D. All right. So first off, so first off, every single night you are different. And I think tonight, perhaps different, more different than any night so far. How the hell do you do it? I honestly don't know. I, you know, I usually go back in the green room with you for a little bit before and about 10, 10 minutes before showtime, I walk out of there and you say you need to think for a little bit. And then you somehow do an hour and a half summing up everything you think in a different way on any given night. Well, there's some, I'll answer that technically. You know, the first thing is, is that something I tell my students, you know, if, if you want to write an essay, you need a problem because the essay is an attempt to solve a problem. So first of all, you need a problem. And then second, if you're going to devote time to the problem, then it should be like it should be a problem that is your problem. At least a piece of it should be. You know, I have students all the time and they come up to me and they say, tell me what I should write my essay about. And they're often very annoyed that I haven't, you know. You didn't give us a topic. It's like, yes, that's because the topic is the difficult part of the assignment, right? To specify the problem, that's the difficult part of the assignment. In fact, when you're trying to, when you're trying to address a complex, let's say, domain of suffering, the diagnosis, which is the problem formulation, is the crucial cognitive step. So, if you want to write, you need a problem. And, and if you want to write truthfully, then you need a problem that's yours. And if you want to write in a focused and aimed manner, then you unite your thinking around the problem. And so, one thing I always do before, when I sit backstage, is I think, okay, what's the problem for tonight? You know, and the problem for tonight was victim. So, it's one statement. It's like, okay, let's explore the concept of victim and go down as far as we possibly can. Okay, so then, well, then I would say my, I have my knowledge organized in an idiosyncratic manner. And that's a consequence of having spent, when I wrote, wrote my first book, which was Maps of Meaning, um, I wrote every day for three hours for 15 years. And I vowed when I started that I was going to make that, what would you say, the highest duty that I had. Nothing was going to come before that. And there's a certain amount of cruelty in that because it meant that, you know, if my wife came into my office, then I would bark at her. And if my kids came into my office, I, like a junkyard dog surrounded by barbed wire. It's like, because you can always not write. It's not that important that day. And there might be more pressing concerns, and they're probably, including people who would just like to have something to do with you for a while, or do something nice, or have a problem fixed. It's like, no, go away. I've got three hours. And so I, 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 I was a thief, and I took that from my life. And so I spent a very long time writing and thinking about the hardest problem that I could conceptualize, and that was the re relationship between the individual and the atrocity committed in the service of totalitarian possession. It was the worst problem I could think of. How? So I, I looked to see what the worst thing people could do under the worst circumstances was and tried to figure out why that happened. That was step one. And step two was having come to some determination about how it might happen, then, and having learned something that I had suspected all along, which was that that capacity was part of the individual, right, me, as well as everyone else, to determine if there was a mode of acting in the world that would restrict that possibility so that it would no longer manifest itself. And so I spent however many hours, 45,000 hours thinking about that. And that's not right, because that's how much time I spent writing about it. Most of that time, because I have a very 
obsessive mind in some sense. If I lock on a problem, I can't let it go, or it can't let me go. I don't know which way to think about it. And so it wasn't only that I was writing for three hours a day. I was thinking about it all the time, right from the time I woke up till the time I went to sleep. And I was reading about it obsessively. You know, I read a tremendous amount when I was in graduate school. And so the reason I'm telling you all of that is to answer this question is like, then I spent 30 years lecturing about it. And, you know, I started out with my lectures fairly structured because I was still wrestling with the ideas, but I tried over the years to reduce the amount of scaffolding, safety wire, netting that was underneath me while I was lecturing until I got to the point where I didn't need to do anything other than sit for 10 minutes and think, okay, what's the problem? Where am I going? I'm exploring a solution. I'm not necessarily putting forward a, a pre-constructed solution. Like it'll be in the universe of solutions I've considered, but I'd like to get it sharper and clearer. So I got to the point where I could go from the problem through the story using all these things that I had already talked about and knew, and so then I can sequence them. And I think the closest analogy I can think of is jazz improvisation. It's something like that. You know, an expert musician has a tremendous number of hab habits deeply ingrained, like an athlete, same thing, that, that, that are part and parcel built into to, to him or her. And so I have that, and so then I can come out and think, okay, well, a little of this and a little of that, and that's new. It's like each of these ideas is a personality of sorts, and you can let them have a dialogue in real time and see where it goes. And that's a story, right? That's what a great author does when he writes a book, is he puts out some characters, and then he lets the characters do whatever they would do, and that reveals the story. And so I kind of do that. I let the ideas do what they're going to do and see how they fight and compete with one another. And, and, and then that's... See, what people want in a lecture is... Assuming that this is a lecture, and it probably isn't, it's probably more like a strange sort of dialogue with the audience. What, what people want in a forum like this is they want to see thought in action. Right? They don't want to see something that's already crystallized and, and, and dead, which is why I did read the last time I was here, although I do that rarely. They want to see something, they want to see, well, what they want to see, technically speaking, is something, if you thought about it metaphysically, is they want to see the logos in action. That's really what people always want to see. And I mean that philosophically. And so the the real-time part of it, the fact that it's not a contrived performance is actually crucial to its success. And also what keeps me engaged, like it's, I don't know how these damn lectures are going to go when I come out here. I think, okay, victim, man, that's a big problem. Okay, well, we could, we could address it with this, and then we could use this, and, and I can play those together, and we can see how that goes, and then perhaps I'll be able to draw a rousing conclusion, because it's hard to bring that to uh, the point at the end, you know, successfully, which is something I've got better at over the tour, which is quite fun. But I never don't know if it's going to work. And so I'm on edge when I come out on stage. I think, oh my God, I've got a big problem here, and I've got to sort it out in 70 minutes, and there's all these people here, so, and, 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 and that makes it really tense for me in an exciting way. It's an exhilarating you know, it's an exhilarating challenge, but that also makes it alive because I could easily fail. So, well, so that's how. It's lots of practice. And, and then the final thing is, I don't talk about problems that don't matter to me. They matter. This victim thing, that matters. It's important. It's fundamental. And so every night I come out and I think, okay, well, what's the fundamental problem for tonight? And it's a problem that affects me as far, as deep down as, as I can go, you know? And so, yeah.